Avid watchers of the political space will have heard that the Senate has been conducting an inquiry into the processes for Australia delivering on its commitments to major international sporting events. Tonight, I want to share with you a special investigation I've conducted. It's sparked by the work of that inquiry and it demands answers to some very uncomfortable questions at the highest levels of government. Let me explain. At the time Brisbane was announced as the successful bidder for the 2032 Olympics, it made a contract with the International Olympic Committee, or IOC. It's the way these things are always done. It's a promise from the host city to deliver a Games of a certain standard with a clear offering and systems for transparency and accountability. And the announcement made by the Palaszczuk government at the time of the bid was consistent with those standards to have a transparent Olympic coordination authority independent from government. The IOC held up its end of the deal. It put all of its standards on its website for all to see. That Olympic coordination authority was to deal with the whole gamut of issues involved in organising the Games, including the vital issue of infrastructure. Now let's face it, it's the infrastructure piece that presents the biggest risk to a successful Games. It's those critical matters like, will the venues and transport connections be built in time? Can the taxpayer afford this? Does it represent value for money? Are we building quality community infrastructure or just white elephants? It's no wonder the IOC always requires that this be handled by a body that works closely with the government of the day, but that is independent of it. So it was a big surprise to find on the 14th of March this year, the Palaszczuk government had taken the responsibility for infrastructure away from the independent Olympic Coordination Authority. They set up instead a new Brisbane 2023 Coordination Office within the Premier's own department. You heard right, Olympic infrastructure went from independently and transparently arranged to being so politicised that it's in the Premier's own office. This move, which just doesn't sit comfortably with the agreement signed with the IOC to get the Games, was considered by consulting firm Deloitte at the request of the state government before it was affected. It was a contract that Deloitte is at pains to point out was awarded to them in a competitive tender. And for the bargain price of around 700,000 taxpayer dollars, not sure how competitive that is, Deloitte produced a rather brief report telling the government exactly what it wanted to hear, that it was fine to shirk its commitment to the IOC about transparency around infrastructure and instead set up the Brisbane 2032 Coordination Office in the Premier's department. Now, we don't have a copy of that report. It's not public. So, you know, very transparent. But the Premier's press release cites some parts of it. Her press release says, the Deloitte recommendation recognises the state government's existing expertise in delivering infrastructure and recommends the Coordination Office for its ability to cut red tape and avoid unnecessary bureaucratic double-up and costs. Now, we all would love less red tape, but let's think about this. State government expertise. I don't think this government can point to a single project that they have delivered on time and on budget. And they have form for trying to cover up cost blowouts just like they did only a few weeks ago with the $2.4 billion blowout on the cost of building 65 trains. Now, just reflect on that. That's not the total cost, by the way. That is just the blowout on the cost of 65 trains. And check this out. The About government the Olympics. issued a uh, request for tender in April of last year. Um, and in May of last year, uh, we were awarded uh, that contract. And uh, how much were you paid for that advice? Um, 
the original uh, contract for that, Senator, was uh, some 400 and uh, 28,000 from memory. Yep. Um, I stand to be corrected. No, um, and you can check that when so you get home. Thank you. Um, <laughs> if it needs to be updated. And then there was that. a final um, uh, contract that was negotiated that took it up to just over 700,000. So just to be clear, on the basis of those numbers, there was a blowout of some 68% on even the contract to provide the advice about how the state government was so well equipped to deliver on time and on target and wouldn't need any of that pesky red tape of transparency. Truly, you couldn't make this stuff up. Funnily enough, the IOC model that has formed the blueprint for how to run an effective Olympic Games comes from none other than the Sydney Games and it has been used for every Olympic Games since. It's the reason that Sir David Higgins who led the delivery of the London Games, said of the Queensland Premier's decision, it's not going to work, is it? You've got to have a clear brief, proper governance and an independent board so that it can work with the various sporting bodies and the IOC. That means the very first Olympic Games to ditch the best practice model followed at every Olympics since Sydney is Brisbane. It's very different to what was agreed with the IOC and very different to what was promised as part of the bid. And here's the kicker. Deloitte admitted before the Senate committee that it didn't even get legal advice about the implications of departure from the agreement with the IOC. So the bargain priced advice given by Deloitte hasn't even contemplated the risk that Queensland's taxpayers might be legally exposed for penalties for the move that they were so eager to recommend. There seems to be an awfully tight relationship between Queensland Labor, the IOC and Deloitte. Indeed, Queensland Labor seems addicted to the big four consultancy firms, with LNP leader David Crisofulli observing they spend around $234,000 a day on them. And in April 2022, the IOC announced a decade-long five-game partnership with Deloitte as, quote, the Olympic partner. Now, according to Deloitte, that means that Deloitte will apply its deep expertise in management and business consulting to help enhance and secure the IOC's digital ecosystem supporting the Olympic movement. So given that relationship, you might think it interesting that the CEO of the organising committee appointed using a completely separate and totally different process, everyone's at pains to point out, is none other than former CEO of Deloitte Asia Pacific, Cindy Hook. Now, at the time she was appointed, Ms Hook wasn't working at Deloitte. So in a formal sense, that box of propriety has been ticked. But she'd only left a short time earlier and left from a company with a special commercial relationship with the IOC. Now, I'm not saying anything untoward has happened here. We simply don't have the transparency to be able to say. But the public perception of it just stinks. And there's a responsibility to avoid perceived conflicts of interest and not just actual ones. As was revealed in the Senate committee process, one of the key personnel that worked on providing the Deloitte report to the Palaszczuk government was none other than Rachel Nolan, former Labor member for Ipswich. It was revealed that she has been a special advisor to Deloitte for 12 to 18 months, according to the evidence given in the Senate. And would you believe it, her name was redacted from documents that were provided to the committee. Now, that could be a routine, ordinary process. Or again, it could well and truly stink. There's plenty of questions for the government to answer here. Why are former Labor MPs being commissioned from the big firms to provide advice to the government, telling it to ditch their contractual obligations without so much as getting legal advice? Is Rachel Nolan still on the team advising Labor for the Olympics? Why are Labor so keen to exclude Olympic infrastructure from transparency measures, even at great risk to the delivery of an on-budget, on-target Games? 
And why are Queensland Labor being so cloak and dagger about it? Why wasn't the Auditor General consulted on the wisdom of this move? Why wasn't the Integrity Commissioner consulted? There's a warning here too for the good staff of Deloitte. Beware in dealing with this mob. When Daniel Andrews decided to ditch the Commonwealth Games, he blamed it all on none other than the consultants he'd advised to hire, that he had hired to advise him on it. And if there's nothing to hide here, then why hasn't the government been comfortable with a transparent framework for organising the Games, including its infrastructure? This seems to be a government that is allergic to accountability.